Do you remember, is this, I hope this is ringing some bells. Our task now is to use this on this guy and um, we wanted to verify this particular result. Maybe we should write that down. Okay, what are we trying to do? We're trying to confirm or verify that 68% um, of a population is, how do we say this? Um, within one standard deviation of the mean. Within one standard deviation of the mean. And I'm just going to write mu there because I think we're, we've written this enough that we get the sense that that's why we use that Greek letter. Okay, so what would be the integral that should, if we get it right, give us 68%? Um, I'm going to need to start somewhere and end somewhere. So where do I start if I'm within one standard deviation of the mean? Okay, so one, let's, let's draw ourselves a little standard, uh, little normal distribution here, right? Minus one to one. Ah, okay, well done, Sarai. So right in the middle there is zero, there's our dead score. Negative one is off to the left, one standard deviation, and then positive one is to the right. Is that okay? So this is gonna be my boundaries, negative one to one. Um, and then I've got this as my function, so I'm gonna write that gross, one on root two pi e, to the negative a half z squared dz. This is what I'm after, okay? Now what I want to do here is um, I, I want to look at this before I just rush to start like putting numbers in. I want to see if I can do this any better. Um, for example, if you have a look at this shape here, the normal distribution. Um, when we were trying to come up with this shape, we said like what characteristics does it have? It's like asymptotic, but I wanted you to remember it's symmetrical. You remember that? Like that's the whole point of it. So when areas are symmetrical, we can sort of take advantage of that fact to make our integrals kind of nicer. Do you remember that? Think about this. This is the area I'm after here, from negative one to one. How can I take advantage of symmetry to come up with a nicer integral instead of this one? Have a look at the shape, right? You go uh, zero to one and yeah, can't I do this in half? If I do half, and I, I, love, I love zero because of how easy it is to evaluate stuff, right? So if I go from zero to one, like why, why go to negative one? Because it's, it's negatives, right? That's gross. If I go from zero to one, if I find that and then just double it, that, that should be the same. Do you agree with that? So I'm going I'm to write that down. This is equal to two lots of the same integral, but from naught to one instead of negative one to one. Uh, and then here's all this other stuff in here. Okay. At this point, I'm like, okay, this is better, right? I'm going from 0 to 1 instead of negative 1 to 1. I think I can go better again because see this, like this came from the weirdness of the um, uh, normal distribution, right? But it's just a, it's just a number. Like 2 is a number, root 2 is a number. Pi is a number. I can just I can factorize all these out, right? And then I don't have to deal with so much inside the integral. So let's go ahead and do that as well. Um, it's a fraction, so it's going to go over root two pi. So far, so good. And then the rest of it goes as before. Okay, is this is this better? Because remember what I'm going to have to do, right? At some point, eventually, and we're almost there. I'm going to have to put lots of different numbers into here, right? I'm going to have to do all of this function here, function there. Like, I don't want to have to put in this every time I go to the calculator. So the less I have to put in repeatedly, the faster it's going to be for me. OK, one last step. Um, the trapezoidal rule, right? I need some level of accuracy. Like here, I was like, ooh, five trapeziums, or maybe two, or maybe three, right? Um, I'm going to suggest that what we pick, it's a sort of a nice uh, common number, is we go with four trapeziums. So if I suggest that we use four trapeziums, you might also hear this as four intervals, right? Or you might also hear it as four applications of the trapezoidal rule. They all mean the same thing. Five function values. Ah, Serang's on the ball, okay? So if I've got four trapeziums, right? In fact, I'm just gonna draw four trapeziums myself here, right? If it was like this, there's another one, there's another one, uh, that'll do. There you go, four trapeziums. And you can literally count up the number of vertical lines, right? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So four trapeziums means I'm going to have to put in five numbers up here, five function values. So I've got to find out what they are. Hmm. Now, you get those function values from your boundaries, right? So I know I'm going to start at zero, and I'm going to end at one. So I need three numbers in the middle. How am I going to get those? I think. Split it up. 
Um, I'm going to split it up. Sophie, what are you thinking? Um, what numbers are we going to use? Would you not just divide it by three? Yeah, I'm, yeah. now I'm going to divide, but what am I dividing by again? I'm just going to point it out up here, right? I'm dividing by however many number of trapeziums I've got. I have four, okay? So this distance here is one, so therefore I'm going to go a quarter every time. Are you okay with that? Um, I'm just going to go ahead and write these as decimals because uh, we're not going to be able to avoid decimals uh, for very long. So 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.75, okay? Are you good with that? Do you see I've got these uh, values that are going to go in here, okay? Just one last thing before we actually just, I told you to get your calculators out. Before we start crunching numbers, you know how we change the boundaries from negative one to one? We change it to zero to one, remember that? Um, it's nice because zero is easy to evaluate. There's one other good advantage that comes from this, which is that because we're approximating over a smaller interval, we get more accuracy. Does that make sense? I kind of get eight trapeziums for the price of four. Does that make sense? Think about it, right? Here's the area that I've got, right? If I did the whole area with four trapeziums, um, then it would look something like this. Why don't we do an eight thing? Do you agree with that? Like that's, that's what I would get, okay? But because I'm just focusing on this orange part, Right? I'm like, oh, I have extra trapeziums just in this little area here. So more trapeziums equals more accuracy. Okay? Now to the question of why don't I just do eight in the first place, you're like, I, I don't, I'd rather do less rather than more. If I can do less and still get better accuracy, then let's go for it. Okay? So what I'm going to now ask you to do is draw up for yourself a table of values. It's going to look something like this. It's got to be wide enough because you're going to have to fit in um, five of these numbers in here. So your top thing is going to be a value of z. Um, and then what you're going to put inside, what you're going to evaluate here, is whatever the integrand is, right? In this case, it's e to the negative a half z squared. Be super careful with your calculator. And then for each value of z, um, you're going to put in those numbers. So I think we said 0, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and so on. We'd better be ending at 1. This is a bit of crunch work, so I'm going to give you some time to go ahead and do that. Fill these in. Can you give me, um, give me three decimal places? I think that should do it three decimal places and uh, what I'd love to see you on your page have is this table with the right numbers in there and then we will uh, put them all together into this formula. Okay, off you go. What have we done so far? We looked at this integral, right? Before we leapt to the trapezoidal rule, we did a couple of things to simplify it. We used the symmetry, um, we got rid of this coefficient out the front so that things are looking good and then we started evaluating, we started crunching numbers, right? So now what we can say is this integral, the one we started with, I'm now going to use the trapezoidal, which means I'm now approximate. You see that? Okay, so I'm no longer equal to that. I'm now approximately equals. Um, the 2 on square root 2 pi, it was out the front of the integral. It had nothing to do with us crunching these numbers. You never had to type in 2 on root 2 pi, all that kind of thing, right? So that guy sits out the front happily, okay? Don't forget it, it's an easy thing. Like we made it nice and neat to get rid of it, but you've got to bring it back, okay? And then in here, wow, this looks like a lot, but this is just the trapezoidal rule. Do you see what my h on 2 is? h on 2, there's my 0 0.25 on 2 um, as an added bonus, and this is slightly coincidental, but um, that 2 out the front cancels with that 2 that we have down the bottom, so like, yay, less stuff I have to do. And then here come my function values, first one, last one, and then I double all of the middle ones. Okay? Now you guys have already popped those values down in your table values, so I'm going to put them onto this line here. Right? What have I got here? Um, 0.25 on square root 2 pi. Here come the numbers. So first one, predictably, is 1 because we put in e to the power of all of the stuff times 0, so you're like, cool, that's easy. Um, I then skip over all the way to the end. Right, 0 0.607, there's the first and the last one, okay? And then I double all the ones in the middle. So let's go ahead and get those down. I've got 0 0.969, uh, 0 0.882, and then 0.755. By the way, one of the great things about uh, having this table of values so logically set out is that when you have a look at the numbers, you kind of know what you're evaluating. You're evaluating the normal distribution, right? Well, we're evaluating a scaled version of it, okay? So you can see it sort of coming down uh, gently. Question? Should we use decimals or fractions? 
Um, so, yeah, okay, so um, this is a good question. Should we use decimals or fractions? In a sense, the short answer is it doesn't matter because we're going to get a number out here in the end. You can see I've gone to decimals because I knew from the function I was dealing with, I'm like, gross, there's not going to be nice, neat fractions that come out of this. So I'm like, forget it. The advantage of fractions is you get precision. Like, I can say, oh, uh, 4 over 7, which is exact, rather than some, I don't know, it's like 5, 4, 2, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, I will get some recurring decimal here, and I have to cut it off somewhere. So I'm like, ooh, exact. Uh, not exact, right? But here, like there's no way you were going to write the fraction that, like it would just be a waste of space really. So that's why you can see I've got decimals here. I should close my big square bracket. I have been a bit messy out the front because I've got a decimal on a fraction, but I'll tidy that up shortly. Okay? Do your numbers look okay? Has anyone already put it into their calculator? Okay, give me all the decimals you get. Zero point? Thank you. I'll, 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 I'll treat that as okay, right? So, we've got a number out here, right? 0 0.68. What did we set out to try and do? The answer was we were trying to verify that 68% of the population is within a standard deviation. And 0 0.68 as a decimal is also known as 68% as a percentage, right? So now you know these 68, 95, 99.7, they didn't come out of thin air. They came from, they came from here. Does that make sense? OK. Question. Check your calculator. Um, it is, I will say, like with all these approximate methods, the, the danger is it's so easy to screw up something in your calculator. <laughs>